Good morning, viewers at home. My name is Nokolo. Welcome to my program, Rise Up program. Uh, I am from the Christ the Rock, the ministries, and I will be presenting you with a beautiful topic. But before that, uh, let me caution you guys. We are in a pandemic period whereby you need to make sure that you take care of ourselves, the community, and the people that are around you. Please make sure that you do adhere to all the rules. Make sure you, may, you wear your mask. You sanitize, you wash your hands, just to follow the protocols as we are told to do so. Uh, it is important for our health, it is important for our community, it's important for our family as well. I want to greet our parents, Apostle Mbilo and Wendis Khamza, uh, the visionaries of the ministry of uh, Christ the Rock Ministries, and which God has entrusted them with. And we are so blessed and uh to be part of the family and we thank you for the opportunity that we are getting each and every time and today i've got beautiful ladies as my guests we'll be talking about the journey of a christian they are coming all the way from the beautiful city the city of cape town i have zen next to me and zen zen can you please introduce yourself to my viewers at home uh, morning everyone at home uh, thank you, Noxi, for this introduction, and I thank Christ the Rock Ministries for giving us this opportunity to come here today and have this program today. I thank Apostle Bilos Hamza and Wendis Hamza for allowing us to grow and for being our mentors. I'm so grateful for that opportunity. I'm expecting to have a great time today to learn and to grow from our discussion. Thank you. Today we are faced with so much confusion. Uh, there is so much that is going on in our world. There is uh, so much fakes. There is so much uh, 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 people that talks a lot and uh, about Christ, but people that are talking things that are not making sense. It's like the world is is, 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 is they don't know anything anymore. So um, things are getting worse. There is so much that is happening, that is happening. So uh, uh, Zen, uh, how can you address that issue? Yeah, Noxe, you are asking a very broad question. Uh, I think first of all, we need to know ourselves. We need to know what is Christianity? What is the journey of Christianity? We need to know all the process because Christianity is a journey. And so many people are being misinformed. People are being mis misled. People are getting wrong teachings. People are actually clueless about what is happening, what they're getting themselves into. You speak about Christianity is a journey. Can you elaborate more what is the journey? that you're talking about? Okay. Christianity is a journey. What do I mean by that? Christianity has got two phases. First of all, we've been adopted. When you're talking about the adoption, you need to understand the adoption. What is that adoption? What goes in the adoption? The adoption because we, Tina, Singabantu, were living in the darkness. We were like, we had God, but we were just out there living in the world, knowing no what we're doing, we were so clueless. But then Christ came. If we go to the book of John, the book that we all know as born again Christians, which is John 3.16, which says, so God loved the world, so that he gave his one and only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. You, 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 you mentioned adoption, but I want you to be more specific on the part of being adopted. Mm. What does it mean to be adopted? Okay. From the worldly perspective, being adopted is to being taken from one family to be taken to another family. In the Christianity, it means to move from one world, which is the world of darkness. But when we are talking about this Christianity, we have to go back to the book of John, because that's where it started for us as Christians. Because John 3.16 says, so God loved the world, 
that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So what does it mean for us as Christians who were living in the darkness, who were perishing in the darkness, but God came and he offered us this new life, which is Christianity. And then that's where the process of adoption comes. And the adoption itself is a long process. You don't just get adopted or sign the papers and move to the family and then everything changes. It is a process from both parties, especially from you as a person who's being adopted. Because when you move into this family, this family has got its own rules. This family is doing things differently from the one that you came from. You have to adapt the way they eat, this new family, the way they dress, the way you carry yourself, the way you talk, your lifestyle, everything has to change into this new family. Because if you compare to a person who is not born again and the person who is born again. And let me also actually go back to this because people, when you're talking about the born again and the non-born again, people always got this fear. They know what happens in that in the world of lightness. But people always got this fear, okay, if you're born again, we have to do this thing. They actually know. Even you yourself, as you are getting adopted, you know that things are going to change. You have to live a different life. You have to live in a way that that family that is adopted to, that would be acceptable to them. So that is the first phase of adoption, to understand the process of adoption, to understand that there will be a change from your former ways to the newer ways. Oh, wow. That's well said, viewers. That's well said. Uh, now, Zane, uh, we're talking about the adoption. And now, uh, are there any instances or maybe are there any different types of adoption that you can elab elaborate more of uh, that you can tell us more about so that even the viewers at home can understand what we are talking about? From my understanding, when you are born again, you get born again in different ways. Some people get born again through the preaching at church. And some people get born again through the Holy Spirit direct, like Paul, when he talk about Apostle Paul. No one went to preach to Apostle Paul, but the Holy Spirit came to him while he was alone. And that's how he got adopted. And then another way of getting born again is when there is another person, a third person, maybe a friend talking to you, maybe your parents, or your colleague, or at work. So that is another way of getting born again. But these days, you can even get born again through media. Media is such a big thing. Because people, as we have learned from lockdown, people get connected through those channels. They receive the word of God through those channels, and they get convicted. So that is another way of being adopted. But I would like to emphasize this one which is when the Holy Spirit, God, uh, transform your heart or speak to your heart. But at this point, you've got an option. It's either you accept God or you don't accept him. But if you don't accept him, then you don't have other option, but you are going to the kingdom of darkness. Satan will adopt you. So this is where it, it gets wrong. Because if you don't get, go to the heaven of God or go to the lightness of God, you go to the other side, which is Satan. Zen, wow, this is so much interesting. And I see that because of the time, this topic that we're talking about, it's so broad. We can actually bring more and more and more. But uh, for viewers at home to, to, to know as well, just tell us more about uh, just three points. Uh, uh, of someone who is adopted, how they ought to live. Okay. An adopted child must live a righteous life. You need to be holy. You need to be a person who's always going to Jesus and confess your sins. 
every time you feel like something is wrong, because the Holy Spirit will tell you if you have done something wrong, you must always repent. Live a holy and a righteous life. You need to be prayerful. Because if you're not a prayerful person, I, I'm sorry, but you will always go back to the kingdom of darkness if you're not a prayerful person. And you also need to read your Bible. Remember, this is a journey. A Bible is a manual. As a born again child or an adopted child, you have to live a holy and a righteous life. You need to be a repentant person because now you've got the Holy Spirit. Every time you sin or you do something wrong, the Holy Spirit will let you know. You will know the signs. There will be red flags because the Spirit keeps on talking to you. So you need to repent. That's the first thing, to be righteous, to be holy. And also, you need to be prayerful. There is no way that you can be an adopted child and you don't pray. Because if you don't pray, you become vulnerable to the enemy again. You need to be a prayerful person. Because in this family that you've been adopted to, there is a communication. And a prayer is a communication channel. It is a language that this new house they use to communicate. If you don't pray, you don't communicate with your father, you don't communicate with your family, then you become a prey to the enemy. The vultures will come and devour you. So a prayer is a key thing when you move to this family. We all know if there's no communication to any relationship, there is no relationship if there's no communication. So prayer is very important. It keeps you going. And the other important thing is it is the reading of word. Mm. You need to read the Bible. Your Bible is your manual. It tells you about this journey. Because a journey without instructions, you get lost. So you need to read your Bible. A Bible is also a weapon against the attacks. If you are having challenges in this journey, the Bible will always tell you how to fight how to defend yourself. So a Bible is a, key, is a key tool that you need to use. And you don't just read the Bible or memorize the verses so that people can see that you read the Bible. You read the Bible to understand, to understand God, to understand this family, to understand the values of this family, to understand the lifestyle of this family. So a Bible is very key. Reading your Bible is very key. Uh, viewers, as, as you can hear on what my sister was saying here, yes, um, prayer is the key. Because without prayer, you will be dead. Without prayer, you will be thirsty. Without prayer, you will be hungry. So you don't want to go hungry. You know what happens when you are hungry. You know what happens when you are thirsty. So for you to stay connected, for you to have that network, you still need prayer. And remember, she was just mentioning now about being adopted. And remember, when you are adopted and the prayer is the key and the prayer is part it's what is happening in this family so that means if you are not doing that that means you are also faking your life you are also not doing what the family is doing you are not following the instructions you are not being part of the family so meaning that as you know or as you are aware that in the book of john 15 it states there that um every branch that does not bear fruit it needs to be cut off and it will it will actually be cut off and you don't want to be that branch that will be cut off because you are not bearing any fruits and in this instance as part of this family of god it is very important for you to do it is your lifestyle it's something that will be very easy for you to do because you will have people that you will be doing it with as your family will also be part of that. And prayer is communicating to God, to your father. So it is a two-way phase. So you speak, he listens, and he speaks back to you. 
Wow, Zain. Seeing that now the time is against us, can you please just give us your final remarks? Because we see that this topic is very, 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 very big. It's very huge. We cannot even finish it. We will come back again for this topic, definitely. I see that the journey is, 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 is a very long topic that we can discuss about. But can you just give me your final remarks? Hey, I just want to add one more thing, just to remind people that, hey, you are not just being adopted to any common family. We are being adopted to a royalty. We are co heirs to Christ. We are living in the kingdom of Christ. And in the kingdom, the rules are very strict. There is a certain way, a high standard of living. The standard is very high there. We are adopted to a royal family. We live in the kingdom of God. We are co heirs to Christ. So we ought to live in a very high standard. We ought to adapt to that standard. We have to strive to be like Christ because Christ, his standard is very, is very high. So this is not a cheap life. It's not a common life. This is royalty. As we all know, we see on TV about the royal house in the UK. We see that there are rules there. You don't follow the rules, you are out. In any kingdom, there are rules. You leave, everything is in order. Everything, there is an instruction on how you dress, how you eat, how you speak, how you address people. So there are rules on all those things. You don't just do as you used to do. You don't just live as a normal person. You live as a princess, as a king, because that's who you are. Wow, that is interesting. Thank you so much, Zen. We really appreciate that, our uh, viewers. This is so much amazing. Uh, as we are going through the break now, we will be welcoming our uh, another guest now. But remember, also, we are available on our Facebook page, which is Christ the Rock ministries and also you can search for us and say ctr you will find us there we are available on youtube as well as christ the rock ministries and you can also get us on twitter and you can also get us also on on on, on instagram like we are on all over all over all over so guys just get in touch with us get connected with us we are coming back right now Oh, welcome back. Oh, wow. As I have promised you viewers at home, uh, I am now sitting here as we are continuing with our very nice topic, the journey with Christ. Uh, now I am having my other beautiful lady, this one that is from Cape Town. And also uh, uh, I will be handing over to her now to introduce herself. Uh, Lucy, uh, we welcome you. Can you please introduce yourself to my beautiful viewers over there? Thank you. Thank you, my sister, very much. Thank you for having me in your program. Uh, good morning, viewers. Good morning, family. Uh, my name is Lusanda Feni. Um, I'm based in Cape Town in, the, in South Africa. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, I greet my apostles, Apostle Mbilos Hamza and Apostle Wendy. And I'm looking forward to our discussion. Oh, wow. Uh, Lucy, as we are continuing with the topic of a journey with Christ, like now we see what is happening uh, out there. Uh, people, they are mocking our pastors. They are busy talking so much about the Christianity. Uh, some people, they don't even believe that, ex that God exists. Some, they don't even believe about working with Christ. Some, they even have their perception about this journey with God. So, uh, 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 we see many people or many families, some, they even tell themselves that they rather stay at home and not even go to church these days. So that brings the value of Christianity, that the glory is, is, is no longer there. It has been uh, 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 taken away. If I remember in the Bible, there was a time when the glory of God departed because the ark was stolen. 
with all these things that are happening now in the world, uh, 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 people mocking our pastors, now people, they're not even taking our pastors serious. They're taking them for joke. They don't even listen to them. Some, they even... Um, giving them bad names, some they even follow them, they are mocking them, they are saying everything that you can think of. So if we take back or if we can look now at our churches whereby the glory has been taken away and uh, um, so much is even happening inside our churches some people, they don't even come to the churches. They prefer to stay home. They don't even, they say it's rather, it's better to be outside of the church because the glory is no longer there. So how can we fix this? How can we bring back the glory to our church? How can we do this, Lusanda? Hey, no, see, thank you. Thank you for raising that. And I do hear you saying that it seems as if the glory of God has departed, has left the church, has left the pastors, has left the brethren. But what, what it means, what I think... The glory of God is within us. The glory of God, when we accepted Christ, we were taken out of the darkness and we are now in the light. So God and his glory, it stays within us. And now it's the time for us to portray it. And I believe that it's actually part of the journey that we're walking, um, this Christian journey, because now these things, they were prophesied prophesied. The Bible told us that these things, they will happen. The Bible told us that um, there will come a time when people will be mocking, the Christians will be t saying bad things about the church, but if you've got the glory of God inside, then it's a good time that we are in this era. God has raised us as these Christians in, in our days to portray it from within. So I, I don't think we, we as Christians need to take it as or feel ashamed or be angry when people are saying all these bad things about the Christianity. It's high time that we actually portray it from within and God is going to help us. And it's, that is why we're saying it's still part of the journey that we're working as Christians. And these things, they have to happen because remember, even in, during Christ's time, he was mocked. They said things about him. There was a demon. He was this. He was that. So if, if you're carrying and following in this journey and we, say, we idolize ourselves as Christians, so these things have, have to happen in, in our time as well and with us as well. So it's how we portray ourselves. It's how we, or, or what we do. When people are saying those things, what are, what are we doing? What are we portraying? Are we going to be angry? Are we going to be mocking them back? Oh, we're going to continue with the journey, saying or doing what the Bible told us to do when those things happen. Wow, this is so, so much interesting, viewers. As you hear what my sister was saying here now, the point is, you will, yes, you will get those because it is the journey. So you will be mocked, yes, you will get everything, you, but it is not about you to focus on those distractions. There may be those distractions, but let those distractions not disturb you on your way. Stay focused. Make sure that you are not distracted because even if let me take now let me just make 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 an example if 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 i drive my car going wherever i'm going okay i'm going to cape town in this case and 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 on my way there will be stops there will be detours there will be i will get a flat tire on my way i will get everything but that doesn't stop me to go and reach my destination because I know where I am going. So I will do everything that I have to do and go and be where I want to be. So those distractions, do not focus more on them, but just stay focused on your destination. In the book of Matthew, it says, Blessed are those who are being abused because they are doing right. But remember, if you are abused because you are doing wrong, the only thing that you can do, repent and move forward. Move on, carry on, continue. Do not stop there.
because greater is he that is in you uh, than the one that is in the world. He will still take you through. He will still go with you no, no, go with, go with you no matter what. So don't lose your focus. Just continue because remember, if you continue, remember the God that says that whoever that wants to be my follower, they shall bear their cross and follow me. So you have to follow. Just le lean on him. Follow, follow, just follow. My sister, there might be viewers at home who would like to find out where we're getting these topics. Maybe they might think that we're getting it from our head or maybe it's something that we, we are discussing on our way to work or maybe we're getting it from wherever else or maybe we're getting it from school. But may, may you elaborate more and give us some scriptures that are based on these adoption, on these topics that we are actually talking about. Thank you, thank you, my sister, for for bringing that point because really people think that we just talking all these things, but we are always guided by the Bible and everything throughout this journey, God has actually put it down um, for us to read in the Bible. So if I can just start by reading from Ephesians chapter one verse five, and then let's see what the Word of God is saying to us. Um, Ephesians chapter one verse five says he predestined us for adoption for sonship through jesus christ in accordance with his pleasures and will to the praise of his glory grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the richness of god's grace so as you can hear from this word, we, we are sons in the kingdom. We've, we are adopted. And let's remember that God gave us his son to walk this journey. So we are not walking a journey, only our journey. He came and walked this road. And what we need to do as sons and daughters, we need to remember what happened when he was on earth and walking this journey. This journey. When people mocked him. What did he do? When people called him names, what did he do? So as sons, we ought to follow by carrying our cross. We ought to go the road he, 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 he walked. We have to remember at all times that as, as the son of God, these things happened and this is how he did it. He went through it and now when these things are happening to us, we need to learn from what happened in his time and walk just the way he did. In this adoption, what is it that we receive? What is it that is for us? What is our benefit from this adoption? Um, okay, so what, I've, what we have received from this adoption? Like I what said, Samshin, I've been, I've been waiting for you to, to say that. And then I'm going to take it back to the word as well. Um, from Romans chapter 3, verse 23, where the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we were in the darkness, we were sinners, and then we were adopted. God took, um, gave us his son so that our sins can, can be forgiven. So as sons and daughters in the kingdom, in this journey, we know, number one, that we have been forgiven our sins. We actually have, been, have received life abundantly. We were dead and now we have life through forgiveness of sin. And now we are called sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. Um, my sister, this actually reminds me that we just came out of Easter, which is a, a constant um, reminder for me, that is, uh, that God has sent us a sign who, who died for me, for my sins to be, forgive me, to be forgiven, for me to be out of the darkness. It, it reminds me of when I was in darkness and now I am in light. That glory that now has come through Christ, that now I have life and I have it in abundance. That glory that is now shining through me because of Christ who has given me a new life. A new, a new chance in life. Um, and through this journey, it is so very well and, and good and fitting for me to be walking this journey with my Christ. Wow, thank you so much for what you have just said.
My sister, how can one get in the journey that you are talking about? So, yes, my sister. So, if I can take it back to the Bible. On 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So as the word is telling us, uh, we need to confess our sins in this journey. We need to talk to him and tell him what we've done. We need to uh, be open with him. We need, and he is faithful. God is very faithful and he's righteous. So if we, he wants us to come to him, to be open with him and ask for forgiveness. And he will give us life and give it abundantly. As you've heard um, what the word is saying, we really have to confess our sins. We need to be open because um, even the Bible says um, that we have to confess it with our mouths. We have to say what we've done in the world for God to know that we really mean this. We need to, to be open to God. Um, it, not that he doesn't know because it's a God who knows. Um, he, he knows, he knew us even when we were walking in the dark. He knows us now in the light. So we, when we come to him, we come with open hearts. We open our hearts so, so that he can see that we are pure and genuine in this journey. That's the only way we'll be able to walk smoothly in, in, in this journey. In that we will, our minds, our hearts, our spirits will be open for God to come in to help us, for God to guide us, for God to be righteous where, 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 where we, we, we are struggling on this journey. God will be there because we, we will pray to God because as you mentioned earlier, we need to have a prayerful life in this journey. So when we pray in the spirit and God as righteous as he is, he opens us, he listens, he forgives, he shows us the way. Thank you so much, my sister. As, as much as I would love us to continue with this topic, uh, but this topic is very, very, very wide. So we will continue this again next time. Thank you so much for everything that you have shared with us tonight. Today, we really appreciate that. This is very serious. You need to take this very serious. It is time to come back to God. If you are maybe a Christian that has fallen back, it is still not too late. You can still rise up. Just rise up and come back to God. Uh, you can just pray with me right now. Say, Lord, I come before you. I acknowledge that I have sinned. I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me. As I'm coming to you right now, I'm mm. opening my heart. Mm. Be with me. I need you, Lord. Mm. I know that I am a sinner. Right now, I need you in my life. And I need to walk with you through this journey. Mm. I know that I'm not going to be able to do it alone. And I will need you, Lord. And Father, I accept you mm. as my personal Savior. Mm. I accept you. As my redeemer, I need you in my life. Come into my life right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord Almighty, here is your people, Father God. Yes, they Lord. coming before you, Lord Almighty. They are opening their hearts, mighty God. They realize, Father God, that they need you. They realize, mighty God, that they cannot do this life without you. They realize, mighty God, that they cannot walk this journey without you, mighty God. We need you to lead the way, Lord Almighty. We need your wisdom, Spirit of the living God, as we are going this journey, Lord Almighty. We know that, Lord Almighty, that there might be obstacles, Lord Almighty, but it's not for us to look at those spirit of the living God, but to focus on you who will be leading our spirit of God. Father, we thank you for this show, Lord Almighty. We thank you for our guests, spirit of the living God. Hide them, spirit of God. Be with them, walk with them, continue this journey with them. We thank you, Father. We glorify your name. Bless each and every viewer at home, Lord Almighty. Right now, touch them, Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we glorify your name in the mighty name of, Lord, of Jesus. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, guys, we now have come to an end of our show and continue watching us, to continue to tune in and watch your Rise Up every Sundays uh, uh, at 7 o'clock. And please, please don't forget to follow us on our social medias, medias on our social media. On Facebook, we are Christ the Rock Ministries, and there is another page, CTR. You can find us there and like the page, and please, 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 please engage with us. We are also on Twitter. It's Christ the Rock Ministries. We are also on Instagram. You can also go on YouTube. You will also find us there. Thank you so much for your time. Be blessed. Bye-bye.